Hey friends, it's Ocean, and welcome back to another episode of Lovesick. The city is bustling, it's loud, it's noisy, it's not like Brindleton Bay, but baby Anthony and his mama, Murray, managed to fall asleep. It's like almost five in the morning now, and I know you're like, where are they? This is Marie's auntie's house. Marie got very tired. She got very, I don't want to say fed up, but she knows that her mental health was declining at a rapid rate. Initially, it did appear that her and Daniela um, were okay, I guess you could say. Daniela was there to be a supportive figure, but she also became quite controlling. She bought a bunch of things for Anthony that he did not need. She also tried to kind of get in the way of their parenting and that's just the way that Daniela is we know this and whereas Lizbeth was kind of chill and just let Daniela do her own thing because she was like listen I'm not going to try to compete with you women okay she knew what kind of mother Alden had she's a different kind of mother than Lizbeth and we can get into that later and so that really just did not sit right with her so in an attempt to save her own marriage and herself more so she reached out to her auntie Nina Marie's parents were very unstable and auntie Nina definitely came in to swoop Marie up and hold her while her parents figured out their mess a lot of the times Marie was dropped off here and kind of left for a couple days and then picked up again by her parents and then left here a couple days. She was definitely that child that was with family a lot. It was vital for her to have a successful marriage as well for different reasons than Alden. The opposite reason, if anything. This is Auntie Nina and she's kind of like the matriarch of the family. You know, she runs things. Kamar here, even though he is a male and typically, you know, in Alden's household, the male is dominant and provides for the family. That doesn't really apply here in that situation. Kamar loves to cook and he actually plans to start up a food stall on the side here. They are actually from Jamaica, the Sims equivalent of that. I have to explain all of this to you because I did explain this in a members video and so if you want to skip past this and just jump into the gameplay you can go ahead and do that but I do want to explain the background of these sims because I love them y'all I love them. Kamara and Nina have two sons which are Marie's cousins. This is Adio. Adio used to bully Marie so much when they were children. I mean really bully the way that she looked, the way that she talked, everything. He would just bully her. Outside looking in you think he has it all together. He's always chastising people for what they have if they don't have a job if they're not on point if they're not doing this yet he's always in and out of jobs he's a non-committal sim but he just loves to pretend that he's super duper ambitious and can do anything you never know if he has a job or not if you watch a tv show back in the day called martin there is a character called cole or not cole tommy he's always saying yeah i gotta go to work and they're like tommy you don't have a job you don't have a job bro you don't have a job stop pretending we do have my baby jodeci now jodeci is very different than his brother. They both are actually very ambitious. He's a good person at heart. In fact, he would protect Marie from his own brother. He would literally, you know, punch him, push him, like stop joking her, stop bullying her. The parents and the adults kind of wouldn't really mingle in all that. It's just a bunch of cousins in a room together just you know, have an at it. He would protect Marie and he would joke his brother back and him and his brother actually don't have a great relationship. <laughs> I mean, they're sleeping in the same bed right now, but this is Jodeci's room right here because he actually has a daughter who is living with us. Um, but he's here right now because he didn't feel like sleeping on the couch. So he just came in the bed with his brother, which I don't think his brother minds at all. And this is his beautiful daughter, Diamond, who is sleeping and she needs to get up and get ready for school. I'm gonna help her out and just cheat up her knees just so that she can go ahead and <laughs> get out of here. She is a beautiful, beautiful child, very rambunctious. So she is super heavy into sports. That is why you see all of the sports equipment here. She's also quite creative, but she has a bang up knee right now. I don't even know if you can see it. Can you see it? She has a little band-aid right there because she's always playing basketball out here with the other kids. Before Diamond leaves us to go to school, I do want to mention that she is hot-headed. Now, she's hot-headed in the way where she does not take anybody's mess and she definitely learns that from her grandma, Nina. She, <laughs> she knows that, listen, if someone hits you, you better count to three and give them a head start. You know, that's kind of how they raise her to be a little bit tough because they live in a little bit of a rough neighborhood. And I am going to nip this in the butt right here because I know someone will say it like, you, you're you're generalizing, you're stereotyping. No, 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 no. This is the story for these Sims. This is the, their story and I'm gonna tell it. And I wanna tell you a little story because we're vibing here. I really relate to Diamond because my dad at a young age, you know, when people start picking with you, I got bullied, you know, we're not gonna go there, but but my dad told me, if anyone starts a fight with you, you better start acting crazy. You better start hollering out here like, 
like you are about it and you better be about it and they won't mess with you again my dad got into a lot of fights sometimes even unwarranted at a young age and so he used to tell me that and i was like diamond um not hot-headed per se but i definitely didn't take anyone's mess and i was very confident as a kid i mean outrageously confident I mean, because i'm not even that confident now as an adult depending on where you are you have to fight or flight you can't kind of take the high road all the time you do have to make yourself known you do have to let people know that you are unproblematic but just don't don't test me don't push that button right there you know so that is how diamond is and so i wanted to reflect that childlike essence that i even had in diamond so i love her so despite her circumstance she's a very confident child she's you know she's going places she's cool but why is she tense i can't no what no you know diamond <laughs> i wish <laughs> I can't for losing confidence. What if Diamond becomes a failure? What if everyone thinks she's she already is? I'm over here talking about her high confidence and then here she has neutral confidence now. I told you my game, you know what, Lovesick, you're testing me. <laughs> They're pushing that button. Well, as you all can see, it says it's Alden's 45th birthday. <gasps> that is tomorrow. Now, I don't know if Alden is specifically 45, but he's definitely in his 40s by now. I'm trying to accurately age everyone as I go. I love this. Nina is just sipping on her coffee. It's not delicious. <laughs> We're going to ignore that, okay? It's not delicious. She also wants to get married to Kamar. So let me explain. They never actually legally got married. Kamar has proposed to her, but they just never <laughs> They never actually got married, but in their eyes, they are husband and wife. They are one. They don't need the legal document. Nina and Kamara like to earn money their own way. So she is into jewelry making and she wants to craft her own things. Kamara loves to fish. He loves to cook. And so with that being said, I don't ever see them walking into an office. When they came here to San My Shuno, they came here with a goal. And that was to definitely make a living their own way and live that, you know, their own dream. And what they have is great. You know, they love the city. They love the culture. Oh, look at this food. This looks delicious. Let me have him call everyone to the meal. I know Nina's like, come on, let's get Marie out here. What's she doing? I think Marie is absolutely stalling. <laughs> she is feeling a little bit sad as well. She can't help but think about Alden. She can't help but think about her situation. I'm going to have Auntie Nina now give Marie a hug and she's going to say, listen, baby, I know that, you know, this is hard for you. She kind of briefly uh, told her aunt a little bit about her life. See, because here's the thing. Who is calling? Abigail is decided to call and check on Marie. I believe that she knows that something is not right, even from her swimming meet that she had in the other episode. She's actually quite concerned, whereas Madison is kind of keeping her distance from everyone in the family. She's just living her best life because she can't with the drama after what happened on Harvest Fest. So Marie is going to say, oh, <laughs> thank you, Abby. Marie has not invited them to her wedding, not even to a baby shower. And the reason for that we can get into, but oh. Marie really appreciated that hug. Yes, she actually does like affection. Yes, because you're not like Alden, girl. You really do need this big hug. They don't know Alden like that. They just know surface level. You know, I just needed to get away. And I just, I know that I've been avoiding seeing you all for a while now. And I know that it's it's time. And we're going to do Marie's hair. She's going to probably like braid it, put it in a nice little protective style. I don't want her to pick my hair. I want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Ask for hairstyle, offer appearance. How do I do this? Don't just give me a random look. Oh no, babe. No, she just got me. No, she just gave me this updo. <laughs> yeah, I love it, auntie. It's just, <laughs> my head is, it's slick back, girl, slick back attack. She gripped this ponytail back there. I see what I had to do. I see, no, oh, wait a minute now. Hold on, <laughs> this is kind of cute. Aunt Nina, you can do hair, honey. No, you don't have to do it again. So the hairstyle doesn't stay. They just kind of like mess around with your hair, but I thought you could actually get your hair done. But in this moment, I feel like it's best for Marie to really tell her aunt some more things that she has completely missed out on on her life. I mean, they probably haven't seen each other since Marie was a very, very young adult. Probably, what, 19? She's just kind of kept up on Sims book. Absolutely not, Aunt Nina. You need to you need to put my hair back she's telling aunt nina how she fell in love with alden it actually makes her a little bit happy talking to her you know aunt nina i fell in love with him we were friends first he was actually married at the time and her aunt is like married and she's like yes but when he was 
you know, when they divorced or uh, separated, that's when we actually got serious and we both had the same goals and ambitions, you know, because I was in the medical field and Aunt Nina is like, well, what's going on with that? And she's like, I took a break after having Anthony. And she's also getting into the details of how his wife, ex-wife uh, cheated on him. And Nina is like, oh, that is messy. And that is crazy. And then she's also talking about Daniela and how that was the breaking point. Um, we're also briefly talking about her parents you know but that's also still a sore subject so we're not talking about it too much Aunt nina is basically saying to herself i would like to uh meet this husband of yours one day and she's like yeah tomorrow's actually his birthday and i'm just look at how sad she's she is she's like i'm just not even ready to see him you know i just feel like i need to be and nina's just like rooted you need to be home with your family baby it's been a long time and you need to find yourself again. And especially after you have a baby, you deal with postpartum. And I know that you've had certain things happen in your life that have affected you tremendously. You need to be home. You need to be centered. And so that you can go back and be the best mom that you can and the best wife. Do you still want to be with him? Oddly enough, yeah, I do. I think he's a great guy and I don't want to be alone no 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 wait 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 we're not going to do this I don't want to be alone stuff okay that's not why you stay with people not because you want to you don't you're afraid to be alone you need to make sure that you are with him because you want to be with him baby not because you you are fear being alone or fear that no one will love you don't do that okay so use this time to really think about that and get your space and see what happens you know but let's we'll get your mind off of it we don't have to talk about it i can tell it's ruining your day already <laughs> so i'm actually gonna go and create a sim and change up marie's hair because i do want to give her an actual hairstyle i want it to look like she actually did get her hair done by her auntie i love this i think this is really cute marie always felt a little bit different than her family and growing up because she was bullied so much by audio it really affected her genuinely did and so she just created distance and space that she really didn't need to it's understandable sometimes some of us are more avoidant than others and so that's kind of like where she fell and that is why her and jodeci are definitely way closer because you know he he would reach out sometimes on sim's book and ask her like hey you know um, how are you how have you been i obviously have to put every sim in this sweater y'all already know what it is again her auntie is helping her out helping her you know feel good reminding her of who she is you know as a person and because auntie does make some jewelry we are going to make her some special earrings which i'll take these off and we're gonna make her some special earrings to put on but here she is this is gonna be her look oh my goodness she is beautiful oh no diamond is home from school and she's actually embarrassed she dropped her lunch tray in front of everyone she is feeling so down marie's going to come out here which is going to be perfect because we'll see raj out here don't leave raj you know us well we don't know know him i think he's going to go back inside before we can even say anything but he does date lisbeth's sister so we've seen him around before and we're just gonna say oh hi and he's probably gonna wonder why she's out here which is probably gonna lead raj to texting eliana which is gonna lead to eliana texting Lizbeth. hi hi Mar marie right yeah alden's wife hi how are you what are you doing out here oh i just i'm with my family i'm just seeing family right now oh okay nice seeing you she's actually going to give her niece a hug not her niece but her cousin i keep saying niece because we're so much older than her but technically she is our cousin because this is jodeci's kid listen um i told you we're gonna go out and get some ice cream let's go out and get some food whatever's out today <laughs> we just became good friends too and i also want to help her gain some more confidence what we're gonna do is say hey i've dropped a tray in front of <laughs> the school before too and it wasn't great <laughs> so i completely understand so i want to make sure that i give her a compliment she's actually gaining her confidence back just by being able to relate to marie and that is the great thing about this is that marie can be around her family and experience this like this beautiful little girl here that's jodeci's daughter she sees her cousin in this little girl and she loves it so much so I think Jodeci is probably going to... Where is Jodeci anyway? Jodeci's just watching baby Ant. <laughs> He's like, oh, it's so cool. He's probably going to pick him up and go outside and see what they're doing. Raj is like, hey, Nina. And she's like, what do I tell you about kicking the soccer ball in my house? Hey, you know Marie, right? Yes. What about her? I know her. How do I even explain this? He's like, okay, I'm dating her husband's ex-wife's sister 
So yeah, I've seen her at a couple family events. <laughs> and then audio is like, wow, that is very, very messy. What? I'm just saying her life is so messy. I mean, what was that? Sister's ex, what? what? Audio, go do something. <laughs> Son, just stop, okay? How about you? He's like, listen, I have to go to work anyway. He's gonna say he has to go to work, but I'm telling you all, he really has no, absolutely nowhere. I know he can go. <laughs> to the movies. Well, I have to go to work, mom. All right, bye, son. Wow, Raj, I really didn't know you know my cousin. We go way back. Yeah, we really do. He's like, wow, that's so cool. Yeah, man, we used to run up and down these streets, playing hot, like playing in the rain, going to the candy lady up the street. Oh no, Anthony, baby, are you destructive? <laughs> He's destructive. <laughs> and Aunt Nina is going to come in here and get your little butt. She's not going to yell at him or anything. She's going to think that is so cute. She's going to come in here. <laughs> oh, it's so cute. So I wanted to give you a glimpse of the family here. I love how Kamar is just representing right now with this shirt everywhere. He's got his, his pride, his Jamaican pride. Are you messing with Auntie stuff? Are you messing with Auntie stuff? Auntie. Oh, did I say Auntie? Oh, well, no, that is his great aunt. Yeah, it is. Okay, so that's right. Oh, my goodness. He's so cute. Jodeci has to head out. So he's actually going to ask his mom, hey, can you uh, keep an eye on Diamond for me? And she's like, where are you going? Oh, I just, I forgot. I have to, um, you know what, Jodeci, just go. Like, she's just like, just go because he's in and out a lot. I'm not going to lie. He's a great person. Even though he has a daughter and responsibilities, he definitely still uh, doesn't really make time to be as great as a father as I think he could. So I'm just going to have him go out. In fact, I'll just invite Raj just so we can have a little bit of a relationship. He's just like, all right, mom, I'll be back. You know, he's just here one minute, gone the next. Jodeci had a child at a young age. And so, you know, unfortunately, it feels like Diamond's more so his little sister than his child. And that is actually something that, <laughs> that the two, fight over Jodeci and Audio the brothers they fight over that a lot they're always like you know because Audio feels like he's more of a father to Diamond than Jodeci Audio was in love with Diamond's mom which is Jodeci's you know the child of the mother of his child and that definitely caused friction between the brothers Jodeci wasn't in love with Diamond's mom and it was just kind of a thing that happened but when she passed away he was definitely distraught and so you have these two distraught brothers over this one woman and it's like bro why are you crying <laughs> you weren't even with her or were you everyone's watching Kamar play some music for us and she's just feeling happy she really is feeling happy you all sitting next to her son and she doesn't really think she can go back home even on Alden's birthday so she's gonna give him a call and tell him hopefully in the morning just happy birthday um you know I won't be there and I don't know how Alden's gonna take that. And now I want Anina to make sure that she designs some earrings for Marie, especially for Marie. She can only make these right now, but I love these. Let's do this with definitely silver. We are going to use the alabaster crystal because angry, embarrassed, sad, and scared mullets fade much faster. So when Marie is feeling sad and she has these earrings on, at least we know that she'll probably think of her aunt or think of her happy place. Oh, Jodeci, you're back. Yeah, I just need some coffee. I'm so tired. Hey, how was your day? Cool. How was everything? How was Diamond? Oh, she's great. She's so smart. <laughs> Marie's happy again, but she was feeling quite insecure. If your significant other isn't around, how can you know what they're doing and who they're doing it with? Ooh, that is so realistic. Adio, your food is here. <laughs> He's so selfish. Only getting Zoomers for yourself. You are so mean. He's like, well, dad, I didn't know you were going to cook. Okay, well, you could have got some. Marie, we have Marie here. You're not selfish like that. Audio just doesn't care. He's so selfish and to himself. And Jodeci's like, yo, <laughs> wow. Oh, Jodeci's actually going to come over here and chat with Diamond. Hey, kiddo, I'm sorry I wasn't, um, I was out all day today, but quick catch they play right here in the house i love it <laughs> it's so cute oh my goodness audio was trying to take a shower and anthony's here and he's so grumpy because it's marie's kid but he can't help it he's like oh my goodness all right okay well hey i got i gotta take a shower kid come on he's like all right i'm gonna put you right here <laughs> Let's put him out here. Okay, Marie, your kid was over there messing with everything under the sink. He could have hurt himself. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't know. Yeah, well, maybe you should watch your kid. And then Kamar comes out and he's like, ah, 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 no, no, no. Don't be like that. He let him run free. Let him, 
Let him do what he wants. Marie's already a helicopter mom. We told her not to worry about anything. Are we almost done with these earrings? I can't wait. Oh no, did we mess them up? No, yes, we got them. Happy birthday. We are with the old man himself. Alden just woke up and he doesn't feel too different, but he's about to brush his teeth and look at his face right now. He is looking at the other sink, just wondering if he should, I don't know, text Marie again because he texted her late last night. But as you all know, Marie was asleep, so she'll probably see it when she wakes up. But He's thinking, you know, maybe I'll text her again. Uh, surely she didn't forget about my birthday. <laughs> Daniela, on the other hand, is having a blast cooking for her son's birthday. She misses these days so much. It takes her back to when he was just a little kid. And she would always make him a homemade cake. So right now, she made him some tiramisu. She also, like, she literally just cooked it up, okay? We also have the Italian meatballs in here. <laughs> she did it up for her son. So she's just cooking everything. She has decorated everything so nice. And Alden hasn't seen anything yet. She has a roadmap here because she knows that Alden's been talking about taking a camping trip, which hopefully he's hoping that Marie comes back today so that he can surprise her and say, hey, for my birthday, this is all I want to do. So, you know, just just get dressed. Let's go ahead and head out to the cabin for a couple days. They haven't been since the last time when the girls were really small. And then we have his balloon. The girls made a little tie. They always do something like this for his big birthdays. And Daniela just kept it here. The girls are actually going to be coming over here soon. And then we have a new bike. She's treating this as if he is not 45 and <laughs> like he's turning 10. But she's just trying to cheer him up because she knows that it's been rough with uh, Marie being away. Alden wants to ask Marie about her day. He's wondering how everything is. It's just a few texts here and there. And he's trying his best to give her space. But again, he, he does want his marriage as far as he knows right now. He does. He does. So he's gonna call her. The phone doesn't even ring twice before Marie hurries and picks it up. And she's like, hey, Alden, I'm so sorry. I meant to call you last night, but I was so tired. And he's like, it's okay. Um, and she's just saying, I am so sorry. Happy birthday. And he's like, thanks, babe. I definitely, definitely want to hear that from you. How is everything? And she's like, it's fine. And um, she actually tells him to FaceTime. So instead of the phone call, we're actually going to call her back because he wants to see his son, obviously. So we're going to do a video call with Marie because he wants to see his baby boy. Right now, he's like, hey, hey, Ian. So Marie, I was thinking, babe, that we could go camping back to the cabin just for the weekend. You know, that's all I want for my birthday. He's like, how does that sound, babe? Uh, camping at the cabin like how we did a couple years ago with the girls i'm actually gonna tell the girls about it too i'm sure they'll be down to go that's all i want for my birthday i just want to get away and have a moment with you you know spend some time with the family and just just be you know my mom she didn't really want to go because she's not really you know she's not up for the camping right now at her old age but i think she's in there cooking me a birthday cake so what do you say and alden can tell that he's not going to get the answer that he wants and marie's saying you know i I just got here and I think it would be wrong for me to just leave, you know, Al, and I still need some space and I hope you have a wonderful birthday and you should still go, but I just, I can't. And I know that you want to see Anthony, but he's with me right now and we're just... I don't know. It's just a lot. I already feel overwhelmed just explaining this to you. I only just, I just wanted to say happy birthday. And Alden is like, oh, um... Yeah, I, I I understand. Does he understand? I don't think so. I think he does, but he doesn't because at the same time, it's his birthday. He feels like it's, it should be some type of exception, but he knows that the timing of when she left kind of, you know, collided with his birthday and he's kind of let down that it's his birthday and he can't even see his son for his birthday. Um so she's like, yeah, I, I got to go. We're going to do some things today. And I just, I might be busy, but I hope you have fun, whatever you choose. And I'm really sorry about this, but I just need this for me. Okay. And she kind of gets off the phone. It probably was hard for her to have turned him down like that. Like now he wants to do this family thing on his birthday and spend time. And it's really confusing. He's going to come in here and mom is like, oh, Alden, get these dogs. They're 
barking everywhere. Is she picking up poop? She's picking up poop. But he's looking around and wow, this looks amazing. So amazing. So I think the girls will be coming over soon also. He loves to celebrate his birthday early. I'm going to have Daniela call the girls actually just to make sure that they are on their way and they are coming over hey your dad's wondering um where you are no he's not <laughs> he's not rushing them but she's like come on you all this is his big birthday so you gotta come over here oh they're here yay <laughs> and look at how excited they are look at abigail she's like happy birthday dad happy birthday chilling at my dad's house on his birthday <laughs> why did she just take a picture just now happy yeah. birthday Hey, dad well girls i was hoping that we could you know just hang out maybe watch a movie hey dad happy birthday it really oh i love that it really means a lot to me that you make time for me just wanted to let you know thank you for being here girls it really did it it means a lot to me thank you girls we're gonna eat alden do you want to change your clothes uh no nah. at first he was gonna change his clothes but i mean honestly what's the point you're in your 40s and this is all your birthday is right now <laughs> this is all it is we're actually going to call lyle he's calling us to say happy birthday um but he's actually out of town with someone else too so he's busy um and alden's thinking to himself hmm let me go ahead let's eat let me ask the girls if they would like to go camping He's super excited. He just feels like the girls are going to love this. All right, Alden, are you ready? You need to blow out your candles, dear. So right now we're going to go ahead and let's add some birthday candles. Happy birthday. We love you. Yay. <laughs> Happy birthday. Love you so, 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 so much. Alden, it is your birthday, and I want to give you a special gift, son. I know that you have been talking about this for a while now, so I want to make sure that I give you this special gift. Ooh, what's she giving him? I don't know. Oh, thank you. Oh, Mom, I needed one of these. A new tent? Yes, a new tent. Thank you so much, Mom. Yep, I know I can't. I know I can't go on the trip, but I want you to have a really fun time, son. Thank you so much, Mom. I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right, girls. Sorry, Dad. I had to change my clothes. I forgot. They have their own rooms here so they can get everything. Hey, girls. So as you all know, your grandmother just gave me a new tent. I got some new gear, and I want to go back to the good old cabin like how we did that one uh, last winter. And you all were really, really tiny. Abigail, you remember when you got lost? And Abigail is just like, yeah, you know, thinking to herself like, ooh, he's getting really excited. And she does remember when she got lost and she's now having a little mini flashback of how Marie was the one that found her. And she was very scared. Do you all remember that episode? Go back to that episode. Whoo, that was intense, season two. And it makes her miss Marie. It makes her worry about her. No, I think that Madison is trying to leave. So long story short, he asked the girls if they can go. And Madison is like, you know, dad, that sounds really great, but... I was actually hoping to spend a uh, winter break with my dad. At that point, Alden is like, oh, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry I didn't even ask. That's wonderful. I, Well, Abigail, what about you? I, I mean, me and you can kick it at the cabin, you know, for your winter break. And Abigail looks over at Madison and <laughs> they're so awkward, like sisters know. And she's like, actually, dad, I was going to go with Madison this time too to hang out with her her dad has some stuff planned too if that's okay with you i mean it's okay with mom and at that point uh alden does feel I'm a little really disheartened <laughs> we know that abigail is you know biologically his the fact that she's getting older to where she can even decide to go hang out with her sister's dad too you know he can't tell her no i mean he can but mom said it was okay and madison probably wants her to also be a part of that part of her life. She wants her sister to meet her dad and hang out. Like she's met him, but hang out with them. And if Lisbeth says it's okay, like who is he to kill Abigail's fun? He wouldn't do that, but he is feeling a bit awkward. And Daniela has, is oh, like, okay. So your mom said that it was okay for you to go hang out with Madison and her father? Yeah, I mean, I can call her if you... No, 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 it's okay. Okay, yeah, because... 
you know, I want to hang out with Madison over the winter break. So she wants to go to her dad's. He's a little sad, but he's like, well, I hope you all have fun, you know? And Danielle is like, you can still go down to the cabin, Aldi, you know? You can just go down there and maybe it'll be good to get some space for a couple days by yourself. I'm sorry, baby. I wish I could go. And he's like, no, no, no. It's okay, mom. Hey, hey, it's okay. No sadness on my birthday. It's okay, girls. I'm still going to have fun. You know me. You know I love... <laughs> hey, you know me. <laughs> yeah, dad, you love the outdoors. So just take lots of pics and send it to us. Yeah, dad, we'll be leaving soon. I think mom's going to pick us up in a bit because we're going to go to her dad's. Okay, well, maybe tell him I said, hey, you sure? Yes, Madison, I'm sure. I don't have anything against your father. You know that. I'm just joking. Okay, well, thanks for coming by on his birthday. Yeah, that was a great 45th birthday. <laughs> you okay, son? Yeah, 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 I'm okay. Okay, just let me know when you're leaving out um, to the cabin. Yeah. Yeah. Happy birthday to me. Alden is going to head to his room and throw some quick clothes on. He definitely needs a little walk. Obviously, Danielle is like, are you leaving now, Alden? He's like, oh, I'm just stepping out for a bit. So she's probably going to have a nap <laughs> after all of that. Another run with Alden, right? First, he's running down the pier. Now he's running <laughs> in the snow. At this age, he just feels like he would have been in a different place, you know? Life definitely had different plans for me. And I want him to go ahead and sit on the ground here and so he's like geez i don't even know if i should go camping anymore you know go go to the good old cabin because it's just gonna be me it's this sense of loneliness but honestly with marie being gone he's like maybe i'm you know she's not the only one that can embrace this space alden's not usually alone he's with his kids he's with his significant other he's with his mom it's sad but it also feels nice to just see him laying here on his birthday just just given He's just taking whatever life is throwing at him right now. And, and he's thinking to himself, yeah, I guess I'll take the cabin trip. And someone flashes in his mind, and it's Lizbeth's face that night when they were talking at the gazebo. He decides to send her a text. So he's just like, hey, <laughs> heard about Abigail? Nah, nah, don't send that. He's going to send her another text and just say, hey, what are you up to? And he's like, mm, who knows if she'll message back, you know? And she messages back. Lizbeth messages back and she says, I'm trying not to slash tires today. And he laughs. <laughs> He's like, oh no, trouble in paradise. They're kind of talking back and forth, having just, you know, just regular conversation. He's going to send her another text, you know. And he's like, yeah, I spent my birthday alone today. Well, you know, the girls <laughs> came over a little bit, sitting out here in the cold. I don't know, you know, just a really short conversation. And so he calls her and he's like, hey, this might be extra for Alden, but he's actually feeling a little bold here. Alden tells Lizbeth that the girls didn't want to go to the cabin and his birthday plans are kind of ruined. And honestly, in a desperate attempt to feel better, he asks her, um, this might sound crazy. Feel free to say no, but I already have everything I need to go to the cabin and go camping for the weekend. Did you, did you want to get away? I mean, literally you can say no, but I mean, there's another room in the cabin. I don't even remember if I've ever taken you there before. I know the girls have went, but if you're down, we could head up there and just go off the grid, you know, and just have some space. I know you're going through it too when we talked last time. So my invitation is open if you want to go. And Nachi no spirit fitting away. Oh my gosh, no, are you serious? We need to place uh, Gino's tombstone down. I need to, I wrote that down <laughs> because after this, we are going to go do that because his spirit is fading. I'm going to leave it here. I'm going to leave it here. I'm hoping, I wonder what Lisbeth is going to say, uh, but we'll just look at his face. But I hope you all enjoyed this. Uh, if you did, <laughs> please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Just keep simming. Always, always, always stay wavy. And I will see you all in the next episode. Peace out.